So the challenge associated with modeling electrons uh, is that uh, it's been established for some time now that they don't behave like bigger particles. Electrons are the tiniest and smallest things we really know about that we care about um, in the practical world. And um, they don't just localize and sit in one place, but they're spread out. They can be best expressed as some sort of fuzzy cloud. And so when you have to um, think about where they're all going to be, the equations that we would write down for where electrons are, are a little bit different from the equations we write down if we just want to talk about how a tennis ball might roll down a hill. Um, and so the solution of those equations formally would uh, take nearly infinite time and can't, can't even be solved analytically, can't be solved by writing on paper. Um, for all but the smallest systems. Um, so we have to make pretty gross approximations in order to be able to solve where they are. And uh, the emphasis here is on a first principles or uh, approach to solving these equations, which means that if we take the time and we make the effort to figure out how to um, obtain these uh, results, then we have formally uh, made a discovery without putting in any formal user bias. So we haven't made any assumptions about what's going on. We just let the computer tell us the answer. Um, and the computer is getting better and better uh, thanks to modeling equations more and more accurately at giving this answer. Um, so we don't need any more experimental input. Uh, we need less and less formal guidance on, on what is going in. Whereas if you think about things that have been more established and could be more widely used, such as uh, an, a competing um, idea would be to just write down a very approximate equation that can tell you uh, material A behaves one way, material B behaves the other way. If you don't know about material C, or if you don't know about some third thing, then you have no way to get between your knowledge about A, your knowledge about B to C. Um, the advantage of this uh, then becomes that uh, you can study material A, study material B, and then on Tuesday study material C, um, hopefully on the same level of accuracy, the same footing, uh, and have a chance to very rapidly, it turns out, uh, study, say, 100 different catalysts in one day on a computer uh, where it would be very challenging to do the same equivalent experiment.